Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Sebastian Yena from Nigerian Center for Disease Control. My co-presenter is Engineer Baba Galadima from Federal Ministry of Water Resources, Nigeria. As of 31st December 2018, a total of 44,201 suspected cases with 836 deaths were recorded from 20 states here listed, predominantly in northern Nigeria. The statistics also show confirmed cases to be mostly of the ages of 5 to 14 years. For the first week of 2019, precisely week 1 to 4, we have recorded uh, only 24 cases from two states. This is where the problem is in Nigeria, which you appreciate when I show you the hotspot mapping. The problem of cholera in Nigeria is mostly in northern Nigeria and also precisely along the Lake Chad Basin, the Lake Chad Basin. A lot of insecurity ongoing. There is a recent upsurge of the Boko Haram Recently, again, uh, by 2017, we recorded uh, 15 cases, 15,000 cases of cholera. A year after 2018, we are now recording 44,000. States of Zamfara, Kasina, Borno are where we are having issues. Northern Nigeria, a little in the south. So this is how they stand as per the burden of the disease cholera. Hotspots mapping was done earlier in the year 2018 in July. Desktop review of data of 2012 to 2017 was analyzed. The mean incident ratio with variables ranging from the type of settlement, the security situation, the watch situation, the vaccination status in those communities were assessed, and we came up with a total of 83 high risk hotspots, local governments in Nigeria. Nigeria has 36 states, one federal capital territory, 774 local governments. 83 are high risk. But after the 2018 review, we added additional 13 local governments to the 83 high risk. So the issue now is addressing cholera in this total number of local governments, mostly here identified in northern Nigeria. National Cholera Plan. This is, a new, uh, this is not uh, a new thing in Nigeria. We have been having uh, cholera plants the watch sector plants domicile in the Federal Ministry of Water Resources, but they need to develop a national strategic action plan for cholera came up, and in July 2018, stakeholders, both from the states and national level, including partners, developed this document for 2018 to 2023. So a six-year strategic development plan which address key intervention areas of case management, surveillance, laboratory, watch, risk communication, and OCV. We have started implementing the document, even though the final budget has not been finalized. Implementation was addressed because of the urgency of the OCV campaigns. The first OCV campaign we had in Nigeria was in September. 2017 in Borno State. 2018, we had campaign. We just came out of another second dose campaign in some states, uh, Yobe and Zamfara states. A workshop was also taken in December 2018 to validate this document. Now, the final stage is the final budgeting of the document, presentation of the document to the national government an adaptation of this national plan by all the 36 states plus the federal capital territory 
which will be ongoing any moment from now. These are the key stakeholders that supported, supported the development of this document. Uh, I want to thank all of you, especially the GTFCC and WHO, who sent a consultant to support with UNICEF to support uh, what we are doing. Coordination of cholera response in Nigeria is domiciled in the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. And uh, we work in synergy with key partners, like I said, the WASH is presently domiciled with further means of water resources. A vaccination is with the National Primary Care Development Agency. Then all other components are with the Nigerian, Nigerian Center for Disease Control. Specifics related to WASH is the issue of increased access to safe water supply in rural and uh, small towns. What we have seen are cases more predominant in rural areas because of poverty, insecurity, and also in the urban slums, poor sanitation hygiene practices are prevalent there. Open defecation is a very big problem in Nigeria. ODF campaigns have been ongoing, but the response is very poor. A lot of support needed, especially in the area of risk communication, very important. Increased access to improved sanitation, like I said, is also on the low side because of funding, because of socioeconomic reasons, because of insecurity. We want this global community to support what we are doing. What are the challenges? Poor political and inadequate funding at all levels. A lot of priorities, especially now, as I'm talking to you, we are facing a very big challenge of Lassa fever, ongoing since last year. So you have to prioritize your resources. You have to really prioritize. Nobody is talking cholera now in Nigeria. We are talking Lassa fever, monkeypox, yellow fever, meningitis. These are the big issues now. So maybe with the onset of the rains, we'll be talking about cholera. Poor participation of key factors key actors, it's a big challenge. Everybody has been doing parallel activities. It's been very difficult to get UNICEF to sit down with WHO, to get other partners to sit down with the government agencies. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to let you know that uh, it has been very difficult to actually coordinate response. Uh, most especially when consultants come, they come with their mandate. I'm coming to Nigeria to address WASH, but they asked me to go to Kaduna State. Did you see Kaduna with a problem? The problem is in Zamfara State. The problem is in Borno State. People come with specifics. So we have to look at that. The WHO partner, yes, I can help you in surveillance and case management. What about other components? Huge cases, very poor confirmation. With all those totals, how many confirmations did we do? Barely 956 positives, out of which only 56 were culture. Very poor. So a lot of deficit is there in laboratory capacity. Delay in detection and reporting. 774 local governments. Politically, each local government has, uh, on the average, 11 wards. How do you address communities that are even very far from the local government headquarters? So before information reach the center, even the local government headquarters, a lot of mortalities have been recorded. There's a lot of under-reporting because the surveillance network needs strengthening. We have deployed one or two technologies, but still the issue of internet. We have gone into e-surveillance. But what about the network? You need a good internet service to promote what you are doing. So these are some of the challenges. Low proportion of cases screened by IRDT. 
and also street culture. Nigeria has a national reference lab domicile in Abuja. What about the states? Where are the cases coming from? They're coming from the states and the local government. Do they have capacity for culture? Very poor. On the average, I can say only four states can do culture. Now, access to RDT was a very big issue. We got RDT from WHO. Some instances, you have to carry RDT from Borno State to a state in Zamfara. You are talking about over 1,000 kilometers. So these are the challenges. Laboratory capacity. Some states don't have designated facilities for treatment of cholera. I want to use this medium to thank uh, Medicine Sans Frontier MSF for supporting the establishment of CTCs in the last outbreak. So, so many CTCs, CTUs, were established and supported by MSF and supported also by UNICEF in some states. But a good credit goes to MSF for helping case management in Nigeria last year. Rural water supply sanitation and agencies is at the forefront of wash. Only 26 states have established this agency. But is it enough to just establish how many of them are functional? This is the issue. Some of these communities, they have boreholes. Boreholes are dysfunctional. They are waiting for government to support them. A lot needs to be done for behavioral change communication to our people. They believe everything is government. And if government is not their partner, and if there is no partner, they go and sleep. We need to look at issue of risk communication vis-a-vis -vis ownership of available infrastructures. <laughs> Divergent wash policies and investment. Just like I said before, if you don't work with the national government in the planning process, thank God we are emphasizing national cholera plans. There must be one voice in developing this document and also implementation. If not, priorities are assigned to where the mission of a particular ministry is. This is the first time we have been very, having close collaboration with Federal Ministry of Water Resources because of cholera. It has not been like that. But we still have other challenges in other aspects of health. Low investment, we need to look at it. The present national cholera plan we have developed is comprehensive enough to address most of these things. But you need to support us to advocate for ownership, to advocate for implementation. What are our requirements, advocacy? That is what I'm saying. Advocacy. It's very difficult to get a local government chairman to key into what you are doing. It's very difficult to see a governor of a state. Some states in Nigeria are just like countries. Very difficult to talk more of seeing the president of the country, the minister, very difficult. Advocacy, advocacy is what we need. Strong advocacy with partners from GTFCC. Strengthening collaboration, we'll continue to do this. We appreciate the support we have been getting from these partners. We pray it continues. But I want a closer knit where we go together present the problem, solve it together. Not WHO going separate, UNICEF going separate, MSF going separate, uh, Bill Gates going separate. It will not work. <laughs> Request for technical support. Me, I will appreciate GTFCC consultant. GTFCC consultant, not WHO consultant, UNICEF consultant to support this plan. Yes, the UNICEF man has bias for 
a particular component, water, sanitation, to some extent, risk communication. If you are not talking that, it's not listening to what you are doing. The WHO man also has surveillance, has probably case management. If I come as a GTFCC consultant, I'm carrying the whole burden of cholera elimination towards 2030. That is how I look at it. Strengthen capacity in the National Reference Lab. For those of you who have been there, we have done a lot to establish this structure. But we need more in terms of capacity building, equipment, and most especially the need for sequencing. We want to have that capacity to do sequencing. To also strengthen those that can do culture instead of RDT. <coughs> Building capacity is ongoing, but it's not enough. A lot of people are in the public health sector in Nigeria. A lot of people are working on cholera, from the disease surveillance and education officer to the WASH, experts, trainings and on trainings ongoing severally. But if we don't prioritize cholera, Cholera will always be overwhelmed by Lassa fever in Nigeria. Cholera will always be overwhelmed with meningitis in Nigeria. After outbreaks, we go and sit down. Somebody should be driving cholera 24-7, from January to December. Not cholera only during the rainy season. When you deactivate the EOC, you go and sit down and wait for the next cholera outbreak. It's not proper. P-Wash is the new thing now. The president of Nigeria actually launched a state of emergency in water and sanitation in November. But we need to take it off from there. This is what we intend to do. Partnership for expanding water, sanitation, and hygiene is a program Nigeria wants to adapt all over the country to see that we're out of cholera by 2030. But as I'm talking to you, only two states, Ogun State and Kano State, have key into PWASH with some funding out of 36 plus FCT. On this note, I want to thank you and pray that you support what we're doing in Nigeria because the challenges are growing bigger in terms of public health issues and most especially, people being displaced because of insecurity. Thank you.